Hey guys. I see we have viewers jumping on. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Solly. Solly, how are you? I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. Hi, Elizabeth from New Jersey. We have Janet, hello. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Lindsay. I love when I see familiar faces. We have Sherry, Mary Beth, Jennifer, hello. So I'll get started. Oh, Sally says, I'm good, babes. I love when she calls me babes. It makes me feel all loved and stuff. <laughs> yes, we've all been busy bees. Okay, let's get started. I was just kind of buying time while I open up these paint jars. So I'm Bianca, owner and artist of Lotus Theory Designs. One of the nine brand ambassadors for Dixie Bell Paint Company. And we're gonna work on this box today. So it's an old cigar box, okay? I slapped some molds on it. And if you guys have watched me live before, you know I love my coffee bean, um, which is this deep, deep, deep brown color by Dixie Bell. Um, it's a great base color, um, especially for the style of painting that we're gonna be doing today. If you have any questions, hold on guys. It is hot today. I think we uh, in Arizona thought we were done with this heat. Turns out we're not. Okay, um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm gonna try to keep an eye on that as I do this. And also when you come on, let us know where you're tuning in from and say hello. Okay, let me just give you guys, in theory, you guys know my camera likes to go rogue. Hey, we got it, okay. And like I said, I'm gonna to try to keep an eye on the comments and see if I can bring that in a little closer. Might need stronger glasses. Okay, so I pulled a bunch of paint colors off of the shelf. Um, obviously there's more behind me, so I'm not necessarily limited to this. Um, it's just what I thought looked nice together, what I was drawn to today. Um, if you've watched me live before, I don't really go in to what it is that I'm doing with a an elaborate plan in mind. Um, I just kind of go with the flow. So let me just get these jars out of the way. On my table, I have, so that's amethyst. One of my favorite Dixie Bell colors, actually probably my actual favorite. Um, this one's burlap, okay, so um, super taupey color. Green, uh, kudzu, we've got Aubergine, which is their darker purple. Um, this one is chocolate and they have pine cone here, okay? Again, I'm not really limited to these colors. So let's just have at it and start painting and see what we get. So in my hand, I have an oval small. I also have some mediums on the table here. We'll see what ends up happening. So for now, I'm just gonna start putting some paint on there and seeing if I like it. Okay, so I'm just kind of putting paint on there. For this piece, I was thinking I wanted some texture, okay? So I'm gonna create texture without using a texture additive by stippling the paint. Yeah, so Elizabeth says that amethyst and aubergine look blue on my screen. I know. I know. I wish I could figure out how to fix my camera because it uh, takes in the light and processes it at a cooler tone than it actually is. Um, I even have my lights on a warm tone and it's still taking it in and reading cool. So I just don't know. It might be time for a new webcam. Sorry about that. Trust me, they're purple. Um, you can look at my site, my Facebook. I've used these colors quite a bit. You can also go to the Dixie Bell web page. Link is up in the description if you want to see an accurate represent, representation of the colors. So the reason I chose the oval small brush to start with is because I am doing a stippling technique and I wanted rounder patches 
rather than if I were using the mini uh, flat brush, okay? So for now, I just wanted rounder patches and I'm just kind of slapping paint on there. We'll see what we end up with, okay? Sally Joe says it looks fine from here. So I'm not gonna be afraid to start layering even though this paint is wet, okay? I'm just gonna go with it and see what we get. This is either gonna be really amazing or really not. <laughs> you guys can be the judge. When you see the finished product, you don't get to judge off of the, the progress because it always gets ugly before it gets beautiful. <laughs> All right, let's toss in some kudzu. Throw a little bit of that green in there and see what we get. Notice I didn't do anything to the, the moldings here. Not yet anyway. And I forgot to grab the names of these moldings. Pretty easy to find. I think these ones are um, called um, Italian accents, Italian scrolls, something like that. These are Prima and these are IOD. Yes, I went there. I mixed brands. We are not restricted. We are allowed to do that, artists. Um, sometimes utilizing what different companies offer is really gonna expand um, your artistry and allow you to achieve things that you may, may not be able to otherwise because it opens up any limits. So now I slapped on some kudzu. I'm jumping back to my aubergine. I'm just kind of layering it in there because I want more of an old world blend. I could also do this technique with a, a sponge. And I have done it before with a sponge. Again, if you're curious to see that, check out my Facebook. There are, I think a couple of lives that I've done using the sponge technique. I need to buy more sponges. So unfortunately that's where we're at. Okay, so let me toss in some of this amethyst. That's the brighter purple. And let's just see what happens. Maybe just in spots. Underneath here, I have a dresser. That's what I was actually going to work on today, but technical difficulties. I was uh, prepping it and ended up coming across way more repairs than I thought. And that's why prep can be so important. I'm going to jump. Actually, I'm going to grab a clean brush, by the way. And let's, uh, let's throw in some pine cone. Let's see if we like that. Anyways, so prep is a good step um, as far as getting to know your piece, getting intimate with your piece. Um, if I weren't such a prep person, there's no way I would have known what was truly going on and what needed repair. So lesson for the day, prep. I even prepped this. It's mahogany wood underneath, so you have to lay down some type of a um, wood tannin bleed prevention agent. In this case, Boss. Dixie Bell offers it. Um, I usually do two coats of boss when I'm doing mahogany. So right now I'm just jumping around. Check this out. I got to bring this in a little bit closer, okay? Because I feel like I'm starting to get kind of a patina type of look without using patina. I know it's wet and glary, but hopefully you guys can see that. Probably get a better shot at it um, or a better look when it's not wet and creating glare off the lights. Let me see if you guys have any comments before I get too, too far into this. Pamela, try white lightning. Pamela wants to know how to remove linseed oil. Um, you know, I, I am not entirely sure. Try white lightning if that doesn't work. Um, I know that there's other things I can try to get back to you on that. Actually. Um, I usually just use white lightning and I sand everything. So I don't really have big issues with that. Um, but if I wanted to skip the sanding process, then something else might be necessary to break up the oil. But white lightning is Dixie Bell's TSP. It comes in crystallized form. So you just add it to water. Um, the directions are on the container, obviously. 
add it to water, the crystals dissolve, and you have a cleaning agent. So right now I'm just putting in a little more of that pine cone because it turns out I like it. And I decided why not? I'm gonna start going over these molds a little bit. And let's jump back to, actually, let me toss in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this. Okay, we're just kind of building this together, you guys. Put a little bit of burlap in there for some lighter patches. Okay. Let's kind of blend it in a little bit better. A little bit of this aubergine. So by doing this technique, okay, I'm dabbing my brush up and down. It's actually giving me very fine peaks of paint, therefore creating texture. So when this is dry, it will feel a little bit textured, but it won't be super coarse. So had I used an agent like maybe Sea Spray, okay, that is Dixie Bell's texture additive. That's this stuff right here. This stuff's amazing, but I knew I did not want um, super textured, coarse texture. What I wanted was paint texture. So I'm creating that without using an agent. And because I'm not waiting for my paint to dry as I do it, every time I tap on it um, as it's in the drying process, it's actually creating more texture because it's pulling the paint up a little bit. Um, I've used this technique quite a bit on my furniture. Love it. However, when it's dry, it's not going to be really rough on the hand to run your hand over. Okay, so don't be afraid to play with it. If you do find, ooh, it's a little bit more rough than I like, um, you can use uh, 800 grit sandpaper or higher or finer. Um, I usually use probably 800 to 1200 grit, and I just lightly go over it, and it smooths it all out like glass. Dixie Bell paint sands beautifully. Yeah, Jason. Jason says, speaking of pine cone, I received it as a free gift. Um, good. Pine cone is one of those underrated colors, you guys. That's this one here. In the jar, it's like, okay, ew, what am I going to do with that, right? No, it's great for accenting. Look what it did here on the piece. So you kind of see that kind of rusty look that it's giving me without using rust or, again, the patina line. The kudzu is kind of giving me a green patina a little bit. So um, now that I've done the top, I guess I could go around a little bit. Let's do that. Keep the questions coming, guys. Keep me entertained. So I did some aubergine. Let's do that again down here. Just kind of tapping it on. So my goal, the reason I did a coffee bean base, that's the dark brown, is because the coffee bean is going to peek through my um, stippled paint, okay? So I'm making sure that I'm not totally coating the base. So you see it kind of poking through there? I want that dark to poke through there. And let's jump back to the kudzu. That's the green. A little bit of that. See how quick I'm getting this done, too? And I definitely encourage you guys to try this at home. Paint should be fun. And a little bit of amethyst. Thank you, Chris. Chris says there's one spot that's looking really cool. Just one spot, right, Chris? That one spot is really cool. <laughs> Just messing with you. I know what you're talking about. Okay. It's kind of a strange angle, but I'm getting it done. Getting it in. So now I'm coming back over it. So it, basically, if you guys are noticing, I started with over the coffee bean, okay? Then I'm going, jumping to the aubergine. That's the next dark, darkest color. Then I'm 
layering on these brighter colors, and then I'm just kind of blending it all back in, jumping back to my aubergine. And that's what's kind of darkening it up a bit because my goal is actually not to be super bright and over the top. And I almost forgot, where is it? Here we go. A little bit of that burlap. Just a little bit in there. Random places. There we go. Just a little bit. How's she coming? I need, I need to assess. Let me take a look here. I think I need a little bit more pine cone. I'll turn it back around in just a sec, guys. Yeah, I need a little bit more pine cone. It's so pivotal to that rusty look. There we go. I like that better. I'll turn it back in just a sec, guys. Sorry. Okay. I can live with that for now. It's coming along, right? So we're getting an old world finish, a few different paint colors. The cool thing about this technique is that like my paint colors are not necessarily something you would put together. However, when blended in this way, it's given me a really cool effect. So I did a piece um, last week live and um, I'm finishing it up today. And on the piece, on the doors were, were some cherubs that I put on there. And my thought was I would colorize those cherubs. Well, I ended up taking your suggestions, the viewer suggestions and not colorizing them. And I also use silver, so stay tuned. That piece is uh, really cool. Anyways, so my thought on this was, okay, I really wanted colorized cherubs on that piece. I didn't get to make it happen, so why not do it on this? So one of the cool things about adding molds, would you bend appliques, et cetera, is that you can kind of have fun painting them and consider them, sorry guys, I'm just looking for a brush here, one that isn't so tattered, but you can color on them as you would in a color coloring book. So instead of coloring on a page, I'm going to do it on this piece. If I can find a paintbrush, there we go, that isn't so tattered. So I'll just show you a little bit of that. Um, this is burlap. Oops. It makes a nice skin tone. Obviously, I could go darker or lighter, um, adding colors to it if I wanted to, but just for the sake of keeping it simple, I'm just going to use burlap. And basically, I'm just going to kind of go over the details using burlap. I'm just going to go over the details of the face. So right now I'm just kind of lining the outside. I'm not too worried about going outside the lines because I'm going to fine tune the rest of it. So whatever color I do the hair, you know, I'll be a little bit more careful about staying inside the lines. But for the sake of keeping it moving, and it's going to take a couple of passes on this, so. I'm going over that darker color with this lighter color. Watch what I do over the face, okay? I'll bring it in closer in just a sec. I know it's probably hard to see at that distance, but just kind of feathering my brush over the face because I want to preserve the coffee bean inside of those details. That dark. So by not pressing my brush into the details, I was able to maintain the shadowing. Okay. And then I've got another one happening on the front there. So I'll probably do the same, if not something similar to the one on the front. Okay, so the other thing I know 
that I know that I know that I'm going to be doing is adding some gold to this. So let me just show you that. And I think you guys will be good. That's right. I moved my moonshine metallics. Okay. Just get this opened up here. So let me show you how to brush on a little bit of gold on those details. So I have Moonshine Metallics Gold Digger. That's Dixie Bell's Gold Metallic. I put a little bit onto my brush and I'm just wiping the excess off of the brush. And I'm actually gonna do the same here because I don't want a lot of excess. I don't want the gold to get into the details. I just want the gold to rest on top of the details. So using the side of my brush, going to feather it on lightly. I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure. Ooh, you guys, I am sweating. Come on, winter. This is usually the time of year when us Phoenicians get to the point where we're just over it. Bring on the cool weather. And while the rest of the country is struggling with cool weather. We're living the dream, living our best life. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done. So a little bit of gold on those details. By just lightly brushing over, I was able to preserve the dark shadowing in the details. I can also take my brush and let me come around here. Maybe toss some into the actual corners of the piece. A little bit of that gold in there. And because my brush is not super saturated with paint, notice I have not added any more to it. It's just kind of giving me a slightly highlighted look. So I'm just going to focus on the corners. I can add more paint if I need it, but I'm liking the dry brush technique that I'm getting or the dry brush effect. All right, let's take a look. Let me show you that one. So you see the gold, how it kind of catches on the rest of the colors. So let me just take a look really quick. I think that looks pretty good. Let me see if I can bring the camera in. All right, so see how the gold is just catching the rest of the colors and just kind of making them a little bit more interesting. And the same over here. This is where we started, okay? Just a base of coffee bean. And notice how quick this was. What's gonna take me longer is gonna be this, okay? Because like I said, I, I wanna colorize it. I'm gonna spend some time, um, you know, filling in these details with color and just bringing it to life. I haven't made a decision on what I'm gonna do with like the wings and stuff, so I'll do that later. But just wanted to kind of give you guys the general idea of where I'm going to go with that. And then here's the top. Again, um, excuse my shaky cam, guys. I, I need lunch. <laughs> um, anyways, so you see that the nice kind of rusted and green patina look that I'm getting, and that's just on paint. So I did not use any patina paints or sprays to achieve this. All right. There we go. Okay. Any questions before I let you go? Thanks, Sana. Yeah, Debbie, exactly. Is it, well, you guys are dealing with some weather there, so at least it's not humid here. I'm sure it's, yeah, my hair would not love it in Florida. Thanks, Donna. Um, thanks, Christine. Thank you, Dixie Bell. 
Yeah, it totally looks like Ben Franklin. Check it out. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, Lori. You're funny. Hi, Jeet from Nigeria. Yes, very stormy and dreamy. Thank you, Solly. Solly, this piece underneath is getting a would you bend treatment. I was really hoping to do it today, but it just didn't work out. Okay. I think that we're I think that we're good. You guys get the point. Um, look for the finished piece on my page. Uh, Lotus Theory Designs, that's me. Oops, let me get rid of you, Solly. I mean, I'd love to see your, your beautiful face, but you're in the way of my piece here. Okay. Um, yeah, look for the finished piece. Lotus Theory Designs is my page. The link to follow is up in the description. If you're catching this on a replay, let me know. Let me know that you're re-watching and say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I do try to get back and I will see you guys next week. In the meantime, if you want to purchase any of these colors, the link to purchase is up in the description. That link gives me a um, credit, a monetary credit um, for basically teaching you guys this technique. And it's a good way to say thank you. You can also use it to find your local retailer. And I'll see you guys next week, Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, such as my time here in Phoenix. Thank you guys for joining me. Have a good day.